We will talk today about the epidemiology of specific viral outbreaks in hospital setting. After finishing the respiratory virus, we'll take the bloodborne virus, including hepatitis B and hepatitis C. So let's start with hepatitis B and C as representative of bloodborne uh, viruses that can cause hospital outbreak. Hepatitis B uh, has um, it's a DNA virus that has three types of antigen, S antigen, C antigen, or core antigen, and E antigen, infectivity antigen. As we said, hepatitis B virus is a DNA virus. Uh, it's a viral infection for affected the liver, uh, can cause acute and chronic uh, disease, uh, what is called acute and chronic hepatitis. It affects a large number of people around the world, around 300 million people affected with uh, hepatitis B virus. And every year, additionally, 1.5 million new cases uh, are detected and almost uh, close to a million deaths every year out of the 300 million uh, infection. And usually death is due to uh, serorosis or hepatocellular uh, carcinoma. It can cause uh, hospital outbreaks, uh, especially uh, in um, dialysis patients, long care, long term care uh, facilities, uh, dental clinics, and pain management clinic. Uh, this slide shows the burden of hepatitis B around the world, and as you see, you can differentiate between three different areas: one above eight percent, intermediate between two to eight percent, and low less than 2%. Uh, it is very high in most African countries and many Asian countries, including China and some uh, South American uh, countries, uh, Southeastern uh, Asia, uh, but very little in North America, Australia, uh, Western Europe, and so on. In Middle East, uh, uh, maybe uh, midway between both. Uh, the symptoms uh, usually slow, and the first symptom uh, is anorexia, abdominal discomfort, uh, nausea, vomiting, lethargy, and occasionally rash uh, and arthralgia. Uh, then uh, the patient progress to dark urine and jaundice, which is yellowish discoloration of the eye and in severe cases, the skin. About 50% of the cases are asymptomatic, fortunately. Some uh, or few cases uh, can develop what is called fulminating uh, extensive acute hepatic necrosis, and this is, could be fatal. Uh, we need to know that hepatitis B can uh, uh, become chronic disease, and this happened in 5% of the cases that develop in adult patients, but 95% in cases that is developed in infancy and early childhood. Uh, for diagnosis of hepatitis B, you need to detect hepatitis B S antigen, uh, also seroconversion from hepatitis S, hepatitis B S antigen negative to positive within uh, a 12 year is a good indicator. Uh, Anti-hepatitis B core immunoglobulin M uh, and detection of hepatitis B uh, DNA. So for the mode of transmission, uh, it's a blood-borne uh, pathogen and uh, many body substance and tissues like blood, semen, and vaginal fluid are uh, contaminated with hepatitis B virus when the patient had uh, hepatitis B. So any contact with these fluids uh, through intravenous or intramuscular or subcutaneous or across uh, broken skin or vermicosal exposure will, may result in uh, developing hepatitis B. Uh, that's why hepatitis B is transmitted also through sexual transmission uh, because it is in the vaginal fluid and the semen as well. Uh, it can be transmitted from the mother to her infant uh, during pregnancy and after, uh, and after uh, during pregnancy and birth. And the incubation period uh, is between uh, 60 and 90 days most uh, of the time, uh, two to three months. And the period of infectivity is usually two to three 
weeks before the onset of the disease during the clinical uh, picture of the disease and usually two to three months after the acute infection uh, subsides. And in the presence of hepatitis, is, uh, hepatitis B is antigen uh, in chronic patient, they continue to be infectious as long as hepatitis B is antigen is present. And this photo remind you that uh, one of the main exposure uh, uh, to hepatitis B in the hospital is needle stick injury. That's why we uh, recommend using uh, safety uh, needles uh, that uh, um, that protect uh, healthcare workers. And one of the big mistakes is try to recap uh, needles after use because these uh, one of the most important reason for needle stick injury. Uh, and if you look at the, the transmission of hepatitis B by percentage, um, uh, sexual transmission represent uh, 40 percent. Uh, homosexual, uh, the the first one is heterosexual, the the regular sexual transmission. Homosexual, 24 uh, percent drug abuse uh, and other or unknown. Uh, remember that the uh, transmission through blood and blood products uh, become very minimal or not present at the time because of the regular routine screening of blood and blood products. Uh, this slide compare hepatitis B and C as regards sexual transmission and needle stick injury. And in both, we see that the transmission of hepatitis B is more than hepatitis C and hepatitis C is more than HIV. And you should remember that an, a single needle stick injury can result in a transmission of infection in 30% of hepatitis A, but only 3% of hepatitis sorry, hepatitis 30% of hepatitis B, 3% in hepatitis C, and 0.3% uh, in, uh, percent in HIV. So HIV is less likely to, to be transmitted uh, through um, needle stick injury 10 times less than hepatitis C and hepatitis C 10 times less hepatitis B. So hepatitis B is a major problem in needle stick injury and transmission during uh, surgical injury also. How to prevent uh, for uh, hepatitis, uh, prevent hepatitis B transmission is uh, through vaccination. There is a vaccine against hepatitis B should be given to children during the normal uh, uh, immunization and to high risk groups. Uh, also, you need to screen healthcare workers before starting work. Uh, and if they are not immune, give them the three doses of the vaccine. Uh, ensure that all blood and blood products are screened and uh, is not derived from high risk uh, of infection. Uh, and this is done uh, routinely across uh, the, the, the lab. Um, uh, adopt universal precautions uh, for the prevention of bloodborne viruses, transmission in hospital and laboratory, barber shop, acupuncture clinics, tattoo uh, shops. Uh, any location that you can come contact with the blood, you should assume that this blood is infectious all the time. This is called universal uh, precaution. So you should be wearing gloves or double gloves, uh, uh, clean uh, any uh, contamination uh, and avoid uh, needle stick injury. Uh, clean equipment and surface potentially contaminated with the blood or any other body fluid. Uh, because again, we should uh, assume that they are infectious. Uh, double gloving during exposure, brown procedure, disposable string and other instruments. Consider referral to needle stick uh, management uh, after uh, expo uh, after needle stick. And this is very common, by the way. One of the uh, underreported uh, problems in healthcare facility uh, and in the community promote. Uh, condom use and safe sex uh, practices to prevent sexual transmission of hepatitis B. And the vaccine is a recombinant uh, hepatitis B S antigen, a very efficacious 95% and uh, continue for up to 20 years. And usually it is the three doses given in three doses, one month between the first and second dose and six months between the second and third dose. And uh, booster doses are not routinely recommended unless the patient 
is high risk, uh, one of the high risk group, uh, um, maybe taking one uh, or uh, um, booster doses. The next virus is hepatitis C virus. And the virus uh, can cause uh, both acute and chronic hepatitis, ranging in severity from mild uh, disease to a serious lifelong illness. And globally, uh, the burden of hepatitis C is uh, much less than hepatitis B. And uh, compared to 300 million people with hepatitis B, we have about 60 million uh, of hepatitis C, one-fifth. Uh, but newly cases added every year is the same, uh, approximately 1.5 million uh, people with hepatitis uh, C. Uh, and the death is about 290,000 per year across the globe, and usually die from cirrhosis and uh, primary hepatocellular uh, carcinoma. Uh, antiviral medicine, new antiviral medicine, is available right now, and it's very efficacious, uh, can... Uh, uh, cure the disease uh, in 95% of the patients, but because it's expensive and not available everywhere, it's underused across the world. Uh, similar to hepatitis B, hepatitis C can still cause uh, hospital outbreaks in certain hospital location uh, that uh, come in contact with uh, or exposed to, uh, to blood and other uh, body fluids, including long-term care facilities, uh, dialysis units, uh, dental clinics, and pain management uh, clinic. Uh, for the symptoms and the clinical picture, acute hepatitis C infection are usually asymptomatic uh, and most uh, mostly do not lead to life-threatening disease. However, uh, some uh, a percentage of the some uh, some of the patients develop chronic uh, disease, and in in this case, uh, this chronic disease, 30% uh, of them. Uh, spontaneously clear within uh, six months without any treatment, and 70% proceed to chronic hepatitis C infection. That's why hepatitis C is responsible for more, uh, uh, the possibility of hepatitis C to produce chronic disease is more common than uh, hepatitis uh, B. Uh, of which chronic hepatitis C, the risk of developing cirrhosis is 15 to 30% in 20 years. So it takes a long time to develop cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma and probably death from hepatitis C. For diagnosis, it comes in two steps. The first one uh, is testing for anti-hepatitis C antibodies, uh, and this would tell you that the patient has been infected before. And to detect current uh, infection, uh, you need to detect the nucleic acid test uh, to, to do the nucleic acid test to detect hepatitis C RNA uh, content. Uh, mode of transmission is uh, reuse or inadequate in healthcare setting, reuse or inadequate sterilization of medical equipment that's shared by different patients, especially those that uh, include syringes and needles. Uh, fortunately, disposable one can prevent this in most of the hospital. Transfusion of uh, unscreened blood or uh, blood products, this is hardly happen right now. Uh, inject injecting drug user through the sharing of injection equipment, one of the main uh, method of transmission is uh, sharing injection uh, needles between uh, um, abu uh, drug abusers. Incubation period for hepatitis C is 40 to 60 days, shorter than hepatitis B. From, uh, from first week before uh, the uh, symptoms appear, the patient become infectious, and they continue to be infectious indefinitely as long as uh, the patient has uh, uh, hepatitis C RNA uh, detected in his blood, mean, meaning that he's a chronic uh, patient. And this table is a nice table uh, comparing hepatitis B with hepatitis C uh, and would say the prevalence is higher for B than C and worldwide hepatitis B is five times more than hepatitis C, uh, very similar in, in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, also, the incidence is higher in hepatitis B uh, than C, almost a double. The transmission of hepatitis B mainly sexual 
uh, so they can go to the other partner uh, and injection uh, drug users. Uh, also, uh, in hepatitis C, it is the reverse. Uh, drug users first and then sexual second, uh, because hepatitis C uh, is less transmitted by sexual uh, transmission. Infectivity is higher, much higher in hepatitis B than C, including sexual and the drug user. Both are higher in hepatitis uh, B than C. Incubation period is two to five months in uh, B, but much shorter in, uh, in uh, C, uh, two weeks to six months, uh, usually one and a half month only. Symptoms, uh, you cannot differentiate between B and C uh, within sympt uh, using symptoms, and most of the patients actually are very mild or asymptomatic. Uh, asymptomatic cases represent the majority of both, uh, 50 to 70 percent of adults with hepatitis B and 70 to 80 percent of adults with hepatitis C, as we said. Uh, acute cases common in hepatitis B, rare in hepatitis C, coronosity more in hepatitis C, less in hepatitis B, uh, chronic liver disease, again high risk in hepatitis C, lower risk in hepatitis B, serology, uh, usually you can detect acute and chronic uh, hepatitis C, you can detect the anti, uh, sorry, the nucleic acid uh, material of the virus in the blood, indicating chronicity. Uh, vaccine available for hepatitis B, uh, not available for hepatitis C. However, new medication now is available for hepatitis C that can eradicate the disease if uh, used on large scale. Uh, for prevention and control of hepatitis C, it's almost the same as hepatitis B, so you need to make sure that all blood and blood products uh, are free from uh, hepatitis C, uh, adopt universal uh, precautions for all uh, blood-borne virus transmission uh, or exposures in hospital, laboratory, barber shops, acupuncture clinics, and tattoo shops, uh, clean equipment and surface potentially uh, contaminated with blood or other body fluids, double gloving when you have exposure prone uh, procedure, Dispos use disposable syringes and other instruments, and if not uh, disposable, then you need to make sure disinfection uh, is done appropriately to uh, avoid transmission uh, of infection. Consider referral to needle stick injury after exposure, and remember that uh, you shouldn't restrict the patients Sorry, you shouldn't restrict uh, healthcare workers uh, or other workers from uh, working in hospital or schools because they have hepatitis B, A, C. However, if they uh, uh, work in certain occupation that can uh, uh, represent um, uh, risk to uh, uh, exposing patients to hepatitis C, they are not allowed. Uh, as we said, there is no vaccine to hepatitis uh, uh, C. By now, we finished the respiratory viruses, the blood-borne viruses, and now for the last group, the GIT viruses, including uh, rotavirus and hepatitis A virus. So in this section, we will talk in details about, uh, about rotavirus and hepatitis A virus exposure. We will start with the rotavirus, which is a major cause for uh, diarrhea in uh, pediatric patients and can cause outbreaks in the hospital in certain population. So as we said, uh, rotavirus constitute the principal causal agent for intra-hospital diarrhea in children. And actually, uh, incidence of intra-hospital gastroenteritis is 2 to 7% among hospitalized children, uh, primarily young age under two years. And uh, rotavirus is responsible for 20 to 50 percent of severe diarrhea that require hospitalization in children under five years. So it is a major cause for diarrhea and severe diarrhea among children, especially uh, less than five, five years. Uh, can cause a hospital outbreak, especially in pediatric ward, as we said. And also outbreaks can happen uh, with less disease, with less severe disease in adult wards with immunocompromised status like hematology oncology wards. The clinical picture is usually uh, fever, abdominal pain, vomiting, uh, followed by watery diarrhea for about a week. 
gastroenteritis in immunocompromised patient, less severe symptoms can happen. Uh, diagnosis is usually rapid detection of rota rotavirus antigen in a stool specimen. And the mode of transmission is uh, person to person, direct contact uh, to uh, the virus uh, in the uh, stool or contaminated surfaces. So rotavirus can spread by contaminated hands for healthcare workers who do not do appropriate hand hygiene, and also contaminated surfaces, including toys and surfaces, food or water in pediatric ward. The virus survive on the hand of healthcare workers for almost four hours, so can be transmitted indirectly also by, by healthcare workers, as we said, and also can stay for several days on surfaces. That's why uh, both uh, uh, fecal oral uh, contact indirect and direct can be mode of transmission for rotavirus. Incubation period is very short, usually one or two days, and period of infectivity usually uh, start two days before the onset of diarrhea and continue for up to 10 days after the onset of symptoms. Uh, for the prevention and control, fortunately, there is a vaccine against rotavirus, uh, a little expensive vaccine, but can be used in, it, in it children. Hand hygiene and environmental cleaning because it can be transmitted uh, through indirect uh, transmission and direct transmission uh, through contaminated surface, uh, through the contaminated hands and surfaces. Uh, that's why we should place the patients uh, with uh, rotavirus usually pediatric patients in contact precautions, uh, single room or cohorting uh, similar patients are allowed. Um, uh, you need to make sure uh, in pediatric wards that uh, there is safe places for changing uh, napkins, uh, toilet and toilet training, uh, preparing and handling of food, uh, cleaning of a sleeping area, toys and other uh, surfaces that touch by uh, the pediatric pediatric patients. And in the community, uh, you can reduce rotavirus, of course, by appropriate sanitation of food, water, and um, uh, uh, breastfeeding. Uh, for the vaccine, it is live attenuated vaccine given in two to three doses, and it is now given in most of the countries for uh, uh, among the childhood uh, immunization, it is very effective in protecting against severe rotavirus disease and provide 85 to 98 per, uh, percent protection against uh, severe rotavirus and can reduce uh, the hospitalization and deaths by uh, 40 to 90 percent for hospitalization, 60 to 70 percent for uh, rota related death. Uh, the last uh, uh, viral in, uh, infection in this uh, lecture would be viral A hepatitis, uh, the second one for uh, GIT viruses or orally transmitted viruses. Hepatitis A uh, can also affect the liver like hepatitis B and C causing hepatitis, but usually it's a mild disease, acute disease. There is no uh, coronacity in hepatitis A. Uh, but some, in some very few number of patients, it can be severe disease, fulminating hepatitis, that can lead to hepatic failure uh, and death. Um, hepatitis A outbreak uh, can happen in the hospital, especially uh, with the lack of safe water and bore sanitation and hygiene, uh, uh, including contaminated and dirty, contaminated surfaces and dirty hands. Uh, hepatitis A can uh, cause uh, hospital outbreaks among healthcare workers and uh, patients as well. If you look at this map, you will see that hepatitis A infection uh, is mainly concentrated in developing countries in Africa, uh, Asia, and South America. Uh, the symptoms is uh, more or less similar to other hepat uh, hepatitis A, A, B, and C. Uh, there is a prodroma of fever, malaise, anorexia, nausea, abdominal discomfort, and can uh, progress to jaundice, elevated liver enzyme, and sometimes enlarged uh, 
tender liver. Most of the cases, this is the good news, most of the cases are actually asymptomatic. Uh, but unlike hepatitis B and C, there is no coronacity. That's why it's a, uh, a self-limiting uh, disease. It is diagnosed by positive hepatitis A specific immunoglobulin in the serum. The mode of transmission is, uh, as we said, oral transmission and contact transmission, similar to rotavirus, so ingestion of contaminated food, water, or through direct contact for, uh, with an infectious, uh, infectious person. Uh, Foodborne outbreaks have been linked to infected uh, food handlers preparing food, raw uncooked, or uncooked shellfish harvested from contaminated water. In some communities, they eat raw fish and raw uh, cell, uh, uh, shellfish uh, and raw seafood, uh, especially in Japanese uh, restaurants and uh, Chinese restaurants, and contaminated uh, produce uh, like lettuce and berries. So any uh, fresh vegetables or fresh, sorry, fresh uh, uh, vegetables or, uh, or produce uh, can uh, carry the hepatitis A if the food handlers have hepatitis A without good hygiene and cleaning. Incubation period is usually a month, uh, and the period of infectivity is uh, one to two weeks before the onset of the symptoms and continue uh, in the first few days after the onset of jaundice. Uh, but in some patients, they notice the prolonged viral uh, shedding up to six months, or so uh, they can be um, uh, infectious for a long time. For prevention and control, it is a vaccination. Fortunately, there is a vaccine against hepatitis A that can be given to children and high risk group. Uh, patients should stay away from the school for at least a week from the onset of the symptoms or the jaundice. Uh, and the likelihood of nosocomial transmission uh, can be reduced by uh, appropriate hand hygiene, standard precaution, routine disinfection, good uh, hygiene and preparing of food. Uh, in case of food handler, you need to educate about the hand hygiene, uh, advice not to prepare uh, food or share in preparing food until become not infectious. Uh, the, the spread of hepatitis in the community can be reduced by uh, adequate supplies of safe drinking water, proper disposal of sewage within the community, and hygiene, personal hygiene practices such as regular hand washing before and after getting meals and also uh, 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 frequent screening and monitoring of food handlers and restaurants. Uh, for the vaccine, it is given in two doses, uh, six months apart, and it is given usually in the second year, second year of life for children among the children immunization. And for those who do not uh, get that vaccine, they can still get it up to 18 years. Uh, you should give it to the people at high risk of getting hepatitis A, especially uh, travelers, uh, those who use illegal uh, drugs and uh, some occupational risk exposure and uh, people experiencing homelessness uh, because of eating street food. And this is slide showing the hepatitis A vaccine that is given to children in the second year of life. Thank you very much for listening to this long uh, lecture about different viral infection that can cause outbreak in hospital setting.